Hello and welcome to this week's Patriots Mailbag. I'm Doug Kide. If you have a question for me, tweet it to me at Doug Kide using the hashtag MailDoug and maybe I'll answer it here or in my weekly written mailbag on Nesson.com. Let's get right into the questions though. Daryl Banks asks, Hey Doug, if it were up to you, who would you go after before the trade deadline? A wide receiver and a high-end wide receiver because the Patriots have those number two, three, four type guys with Julian Edelman and Demir Bird and Nikhil Harry. I'm not sure if it would be really even be worth adding a guy like John Ross or Curtis Samuel, same players in that ilk. I'm not sure how much of a boost that would really provide to the Patriots offense, but a number one wide receiver, I don't know, I would probably call up the Minnesota Vikings, see if there was any interest in moving Adam Thielen, call up the Chicago Bears, hey, how are those contract extension talks going with Allen Robinson? You guys getting anywhere? Maybe call the Cleveland Browns about Odell Beckham Jr., see how he's feeling in this exact uh instant and see if they would be willing to move on from him too because those are the type of players the Patriots could use at the wide receiver position players that Cam Newton could trust to throw to even if they're not completely open second question here DJ Wynn asks how do you see the quarterback situation playing out going into next season I hate for this to be kind of a cop-out but I think we need to see more at this point because after the first two weeks of the season everyone was ready to sign Cam Newton to a 10-year contract extension but now He's kind of struggled here in his last couple of games against the Las Vegas Raiders and the Denver Broncos. So this might be another instance where, who knows, maybe you call up the New York Jets at some point and say, hey, any, any interest in moving Sam Darnold? Maybe call up the Washington football team about Dwayne Haskins if you're aiming really high. Maybe call up the Dallas Cowboys about Dak Prescott because they've never really been willing to commit to him long term he's dealing with the injury his values never been lower so i don't know i think anything's on the table maybe even jimmy garoppolo maybe he could come back next season a rookie a free agent a trade and then obviously the in-house options are still on the table as well with cam newton if he improves over the course of the season or someone like jared stidham i know he didn't play very well against the chiefs but he could still be an option moving forward as well but it's just way too easy to tell what that position will look like in 2020 one now final question kyle asks does the patriots lack of skill position talent have more to do with identifying talent or the coaching staff at those positions inability to develop it and i would put that more on the coaching staff because you look at Nikhil harry for instance it wasn't a shock that the patriots took him in the first round he was kind of a fringe first or second round pick uh same thing with devin osiasi this year he was definitely in the mix in the third round there so the patriots bring them in and now they're not contributing. So I do think that it is more on the coaching side and it's even the complexity of the Patriots offense. It's hard to learn. Uh, so I would put that more on the coaching staff than I would on the scouting department. Obviously it's a big picture issue where there's issues all over the place as far as identifying and coaching wide receivers and tight ends. But I do think that those guys do have a hard time acclimating once they are in the Patriots system. And I would blame that more on the coaching side.